This 3D printer is unlike anything you've seen before. Over the past few months, I've created an entirely new type of 3D printer from the ground up, and its design opens up some really insane possibilities. The most striking feature of this printer is its unique kinematic system. It features a polar print bed paired with the cantilevered x-axis that includes an additional rotation axis on its end. The x and rotation axis are set up in what I can only describe as like a core R-theta design. Two stationary stepper motors drive a single belt loop that wraps around the pulleys on both ends of the aluminium extrusion. When the motors rotate in opposite directions, the x-axis moves linearly, and when they rotate in the same direction, the extruder itself rotates. This is a bit hard to wrap your head around at first, but if you follow the belt path, it makes sense. The design is somewhat reminiscent of the traditional Core XY design or the lesser known t bot gantry. However, unlike those systems which drive two linear axes, my Core R theta design incorporates one linear axis and one rotational axis. The torque ratio between the two axes can even be adjusted by modifying the pulley sizes on both ends. This fourth axis unlocks a ton of possibilities, the most obvious being the ability to print overhangs greater than 90 degrees. As a demo, I quickly hacked together a simple slicer which performs a modified version of conical slicing. Unlike typical conical slicing where the rotation of the nozzle is fixed, this printer allows us to rotate the nozzle freely. This means that we can start with the nozzle pointing mostly towards the bed to get good adhesion, gradually rotating to almost 90 degrees at the tips of the propellers. This is actually very simple to do. We simply deform the STL into a parabolic shape, slice it as usual, and then untransform it back into its original shape, giving us the curved layers we see here. We can even print overhangs beyond 90 degrees like these tree branches. The nozzle can also rotate the other way, allowing us to print bridge shapes. A fixed rotation conical slicer wouldn't be capable of handling this, as if we didn't rotate the nozzle to near vertical at the end, the extruder would collide with the part. This entire process runs from a simple Python notebook, which I've linked in the description. You can slice a model in minutes without even needing to download any code. While this type of slicing is pretty advanced for non-planar 3D printing, it is not generalizable to all models. For example, it would fail to print this basic bridge shape. If we printed with the nozzle facing inwards, the middle would print on thin air, and if we printed the other way around, the edges would fail instead. The real endgame for multi-axis 3D printing is a comprehensive non-planar slicer that can generate G-code for complex 3D models, utilizing all the axes simultaneously to print arbitrary overhangs. This has generally been out of reach for the 3D printer community, despite all of the hype around non-planar printing. Just kidding, I made exactly that. Isn't that sick? I could really stare at this all day. Along with building the printer, I decided to tackle this very daunting problem. I'm a computer scientist, not a mechanical engineer after all. The slicer is optimization based and generates layers to prevent printing supports. I really think this is the future of 3D printing and it would even work on a normal three axis printer if you stick one of those long nozzles on it. It still definitely needs some work, but I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. I'll make a full video about it in a week or two and also release the code so anyone can use it. So make sure to subscribe, otherwise you'll be at the whims of the YouTube algorithm to bring you back to this channel. I'm also planning on turning my printer into a ceramic printer that can print and mill double walled ceramics. So if you're part of the very small subset of people who find that more interesting than a true non-planar slicer, make sure to subscribe for that too. Anyway, back to the printer. The build plate can be made out of almost anything. I originally just used a piece of wood. However, since JLC PCB is this video sponsor, I realized I could use their aluminium PCB capabilities as like a pseudo CNC service to get this build plate made. On that note, I would like to thank JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. I'm not a big fan of taking on video sponsors since this is all really just my hobby, but I've been using them for literal years and have never had a bad experience with them. My LED cube project from three years ago was made using JLC PCB. I also use JLC PCB's metal services for the reflective shutter on my 3D printed film camera. It only cost $8 and arrived at my doorstep in five business days. I mean, it did help that I only lived 15 kilometers away from their factory at the time, but still, that's really impressive. Anyway, go take a look at JLC PCB. They have PCB, 3D printing, and CNC services at very affordable prices and fast turnaround times. Okay, back to the printer, for real this time. To avoid collisions, a 270 degree exclusion zone ensures that the tool head doesn't hit the bed while rotating. This complicates part cooling. A traditional shroud simply wouldn't fit. Instead, I use an aquarium fish pump to send compressed air to the tool head, where it's shot out of two jets. This is all printed out of PLA and sits right next to the hot end, so I can get a bit melty at high temps, but PLA is all I can print with on this cheap ass printer from Amazon, so just gonna have to make do. The aquarium pump is also kinda loud, so I used a rubber band sling to isolate its vibrations from the table. 
The rotational axis deploys a bed probe by rotating the nozzle 90 degrees, which I think is a pretty neat use of the rotational axis. All the other axes use sensorless homing. Basically, you slam the axis into its limit and then detect when it stores. This was surprisingly accurate and saves me from adding a bunch of end stops, keeping the wiring to a minimum. Here's a clip of the full homing operation. Despite its novelty, the printer is actually really simple when you take a step back. Everything is easily printed out of PLA, with the exception being the extrude amount, which I had printed out of steel by JLC PCB. A plastic mount also worked, but there's quite a bit of torque on this small piece, so the metal version stiffens it all up. I used dual linear rails for the z-axis and a single linear rail for the x-axis. A basic belt tensioner is placed on the x-axis, which works great. The build plate is driven by a pulley and is tensioned by a screw in the base. I think it's a pretty sweet design overall, and it was a good exercise in thinking outside of the box in a world where almost all 3D printers look exactly the same. And compared to other 4 or 5 axis printers, it's far less mechanically complex, easier to align, and more stiff. Instead of retrofitting two axes onto a traditional Cartesian printer, or using an industrial robot arm, it completely rethinks what a 4 axis printer looks like. The printer is also really accessible, it's open source and only costs like $300 or $400 in parts. You may be wondering what kind of wacky firmware I used to make all of this work. I was actually quite worried about this when creating the initial sketches for the printer. The two most common 3D printer firmwares, Marlin and Clipper, don't support extra axes, so I was pretty sure that I would have to branch one of their firmwares and add the capacity for extra axes myself, which would have been an absolute pain. However, I then discovered RepRap firmware, which I had somehow never heard of in my last 10 years in the 3D printer community. It's used by the Duet 3D brand of boards, but some generic boards also support it. It's an absolutely wonderful piece of firmware and allows you to configure some really insane kinematics, such as my Core R Theta Polar 3D printer. The printer also works really well as just a normal Polar printer. There's a reason why you don't really see Polar printers anymore though. The center of the print bed is a singularity, meaning that it has to whip around when the tool head passes through the origin. When printing near the origin, the print speed is therefore limited by the bed's rotation speed and acceleration, which is why I've gone with such a thin, light aluminium bed. For everyone who stuck around until the end, I apologize for taking so long between videos. I've actually had a pretty busy year, graduating from uni and starting my full-time job, etc. I uh, actually finished this project during the few months I was back in Hong Kong this summer and had to wrap it up and bring it with me to the UK. I really hate putting together videos, which is why this has taken so long to create. Actually, the only reason I'm finishing it now is because my Final Cut Pro free trial ends today. So I hope you liked the video, and like I said before, this printer is literally just the tip of the iceberg. I've mainly been using it as a testbed for my non-planar slicer that will give simultaneous 4-axis printing. I'm super excited to share that project, so make sure to follow along for that.